Kamala Harris making history and taking aim at President Trump. The former prosecutor making the case to the American people for the Biden-Harris ticket. For the very latest, we go to ABC's Mary Bruce in Wilmington, Delaware. Mary. Juju, history was just made here tonight. Kamala Harris is now the first black woman, the first Asian American to be nominated to be vice president. This is a huge moment for women, for women of color, and especially for young girls across this country. Harris tonight sharing her personal story of her American dream, sharing how the daughter of two immigrants went on to become a woman who broke so many barriers throughout her career. She shared this vision of a country that she says now feels distant under President Trump and made the case for why Joe Biden, she says, is the leader who can bring back the country that made her own story possible. This was a night for trailblazing women. Hillary Clinton also sharing words of wisdom with Kamala Harris. But the fiercest attacks of the night came from former President Barack Obama. Obama declaring that President Trump is failing to do his job and arguing that America's democracy is at stake in this election. But the overarching theme of the night can be summed up in one word, vote. Juju. Thanks, Mary. And now more on tonight's history-making moment. Tonight, making history with a nomination. I accept your nomination for Vice President of the United States of America. Senator Kamala Harris marking her official acceptance to be the Democratic Party's vice presidential pick. Right now, we have a president who turns our tragedies into political weapons. Joe will be a president who turns our challenges into purpose. Introduced by her sister, niece, and stepdaughter. Kamala Harris is my auntie. My stepmom. My big sister. Senator Harris, the first black woman and the first Asian American woman to be a major party nominee for the second highest office in the land. A vision of our nation as a beloved community where all are welcome, no matter what we look like, no matter where we come from or who we love. Democrats eager to showcase that moment in history. When she says for the people, it is in every ounce of who she is. So we're at an inflection point. The constant chaos leaves us adrift. The incompetence makes us feel afraid. The callousness makes us feel alone. It's a lot. And here's the thing. We can do better and deserve so much more. The senator's address following the night's other major headliner, former President Barack Obama. Donald Trump hasn't grown into the job because he can't. And the consequences of that failure are severe. Rarely targeting President Donald Trump by name, but tonight, Obama delivering a blistering and direct attack on his successor. For close to four years now, he has shown no interest in putting in the work. No interest in finding common ground. No interest in using the awesome power of his office to help anyone but himself and his friends. No interest in treating the presidency as anything but one more reality show that he can use to get the attention he craves. The former president making a case for his friend, Joe Biden, and running mate, Kamala Harris. 12 years ago, when I began my search for a vice president, I didn't know I'd end up finding a brother. Tonight, I'm asking you to believe in Joe and Kamala's ability to lead this country out of these dark times and build it back better. Today, President Trump attacking the former president in a flurry of tweets, sharing one video that supports the discredited Obamagate theory, adding, welcome Barack and crooked Hillary, see you on the field of battle. Thank you very much. And in a presser at the White House, leveling more attacks on his predecessor. The reason I'm here is because of President Obama and Joe Biden. Because if they did a good job, I wouldn't be here. Before giving credence to yet another baseless and divisive conspiracy theory, QAnon, which has gained a large following in online message boards. Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much, uh, which I appreciate. But at the crux of the theory it is this belief that you are secretly saving the world from this satanic cult of pedophiles and cannibals. Does that sound like something you are behind? Or well, I haven't, I haven't heard that, but 
Is that supposed to be a bad thing or a good thing? I mean, you know, if, uh, if I can help save the world from problems, I'm willing to do it. And tonight, the woman who tried to stop Trump from reaching the White House. A bittersweet return for Hillary Clinton, who won the nomination at the last convention, delivering a warning for voters. For four years, people have told me, I didn't realize how dangerous he was. I wish I could do it all over. Or worse, I should have voted. Look, this can't be another woulda, coulda, shoulda election. Most of all, no matter what, vote. Democrats not wanting history to repeat itself, sending a clear message tonight. We are united by the fundamental belief that every human being is of infinite worth, deserving of compassion, dignity, and respect. That message resonating with women and young girls of color across the country tonight, feeling connected to the potential VP. I'm super excited. It's historic on a number of levels. It's really important for women of color to see themselves. I also feel hopeful that maybe in the future I could be in office. I feel like this could be a pretty big step for us. Harris, the daughter of immigrants, a Jamaican father, an Indian mother, who met fighting for civil rights. Now, as the first woman of color on a major political party ticket, she's become a symbol for many of what's possible. There would be no Senator Harris as our VP without the courageous, bold candidacy of Shirley Chisholm back in 72 with Ida B. Wells. Amy Allison is founder of She the People, a group dedicated to getting women of color elected. She hosted a presidential forum last year that included then-candidate Harris. We want to shape the future of the country. We want to shape the political agenda. Now we're in a position to do that. Tonight, Allison, alongside her group, gearing up for the night with a virtual women of color watch party. We're making space for black, Latina, Asian American, indigenous women who have a political vision. But not all black voters are excited, despite Harris's name on the ticket. I am not happy, nor am I excited to vote for Joe Biden. Some young voters still feeling lackluster about the ticket. Their vote inspired not by who they're voting for, but who they're voting against. I am eager to get Trump out of office. Um, and right now, Biden is pretty much the only realistic way we have of doing that. Am I excited for Joe Biden being president? Answer is no. I don't get my vote by default. Tonight, former President Barack Obama with a plea to those voters and reprising his message of hope. To the young people who led us this summer, you're the missing ingredient, the ones who will decide whether or not America becomes the country that fully lives up to its creed. That work will continue long after this election. But any chance of success depends entirely on the outcome of this election. Let's fight with conviction. Let's fight with hope. Let's fight with confidence in ourselves and a commitment to each other. To the America we know is possible. The America we love. <laughs>